Hello everybody, my name is Alan from CyberLab and today will be another video about Home Assistant. In this video, I will show how you can integrate your camera to a TensorFlow or the DUTS. This application is really good for object detection, person detection and other detections that you can do. In this way, you can use your camera that you already have connected to the Home Assistant. In our case, in the last video, I show how you can at your real link for your system. So in this time, we start to do another integration or another application that you can start to analyze this picture and get some data from this. So you can locate the cars, you can locate if someone is coming, or you can do some actions, and according from this action will some things look like. You can have the camera if someone come, instead of you have a presence sensor, you can have your camera record, and if this person come, you do something or you can get a screenshot for this person and save another place. In this video, we'll only go to show some live pictures, but if you want, you can save all this data in another place for keep as record for all the time that a car cross or a person pass or everything that you want. But remember, this tensile floor will work in the Docker. So you're gonna need a device that have a Docker. In our case, we're gonna do two devices. I have my Raspberry Pi with my Home Assistant run it. I didn't install Home Assistant Supervised. If I had installed it, my Raspberry Pi potentially could install these uh, dudes in exactly the same device. But in our case, we're gonna install in a separate device. I'm using a virtual machine, but you could use a computer. In this virtual machine, I have the Open Media of all five installed where I have the Docker. But don't worry, in the next video, we'll show how you can install in one of an instance of Oracle Cloud, then you don't need to dedicate a machine to do it. You can do all the analysis outside for your house and send back this data. If you like this idea and want to learn a little bit more about it, we're gonna show in this video, but first of all, don't forget to leave your like, subscribe for the channel if you're not subscribed yet, and let's see how to do it. So before we start to install anything, we're gonna go for the Im image that we're gonna install. So here we are gonna install the Dudes 2, and this one, it's a fixed program from the Dudes 1, basically. And if I go down, I go down here, it's a uh, Dudes 2, it's a write from the Dudes 1 Python, so it's a little bit better from the previous version. To do the installation is quite simple. We can only run this Docker run and do the installation. But before we do the installation, we go to the base and understand what this program and what device that can install. If I come here, they say that uh, you can install in Docker distribution and you can install with ARM 32 bits, ARM 64 bits, and as well AMD 64 bits, and uh, GPU, if you have any VGA GPU, you can install it and that uh, will process it a little bit better. As requirement, they have some requirements that they have, don't worry about it. If I come down, you can have some detection, some different types of detections that you can create. If I install this Edge DPU option, I could potentially come here in the Coral Mod object and add this one. They will work similar, but will be a little bit different knowledge or different object detection. They already identified lots of objects, this one. They are clearly to say what's the bike, what's the person, I have some precision for it. In our installation, we not go to do these steps, but if you guys want in the future video, yes, I can show how you can do it more specific. Basically, if you go for this option, you can have a basic object detection, what we are looking for, but if you have uh, object tracking with the images, you can locate exactly what object and what zone is it. Our installation will locate it, but will not have some precision as you're gonna have some extra library, but don't worry about it. So I can come here and I go up there how to do the installation for the Docker run. So I can copy all this information to do our installation and open our put with our virtual machine. Here, once that I open our put, I can only run this step, docker run it slash p, the port that I'm using, because this machine is only gonna run this uh, dude, I don't need to change the port, but if I'm going to run in my normal machine, I will have uh, the pit talking to use the same port, or maybe the 
NCP or maybe others applications. So take care to don't overwrite some part that you're already using. And now I can come here and put enter. What they're gonna do, they're gonna do the download of the application and go do the installation. So it will take a little bit of time. Once that they finish to install, they will show this page for me. They say that Rigix Detector has a default name, the tape of detection stance and flow, and that's uh, the IP that is running, it's this one. I will not close this page and I'll not cancel it because I want to show what is going on when I set up my TensorFlow. But after then, I can go for my portainer and do the proper configuration to run it better. So now I can put here at site, and now I have my home assistant. In my home assistant, first thing we needed to add some configuration in my studio code server. If you don't like to use this studio code server or you don't have because you run directly as a Docker container, not as supervised, you can go in SMB, you can try to modify your configuration.iml. So in my case, I don't need to do it. I can come here. Here in our configuration, we're gonna set our first step. But first, let's set up a name. It means it will be image processing that the name of configuration that I will do. And now I will pass the first information that I want to have. So the first information will be image processing. The platform that I use is Dudes. The, the IP address will be exactly the same as my server. It means that it will be 192.168.1.223.2.8080 because I didn't change the port. The detector will be default and the source will be the camera. So the entity ID will be camera front garage. So we're gonna try to run it and see if it's working everything. I come here in configuration, I go there in settings, check my configuration, if it is valid, I can restart my Raspberry Pi, wait for restart and that this way we can check this first step is working. My host Raspberry Pi is communicate well with my dudes and that we can see what outcome is coming for this stage. Okay, once that my home assist restart, I can come in developer tools, open here and try to find a image processor. So image processor, so here it's appear. If I look here, I have some car information where I have some scores. I have another car information and that they still update. It means that before it was 10, now it's nine and each 10 seconds they will update it. How I know that it's working quite well, if I open again my putty and open here, uh, around a few seconds, what they say? They say that have a connection for this IP address, exactly the same IP address for my home system, and they have some information detection, so they are processing it. If I come here and stop it, they will just stop in all the process, and that I will not have to run again. What's the way that I can make it restart and always run? I can minimize this one, come here in my portainer, and here in my container, I will update my containers, so here in the containers, I have my dudes. If I open my dudes, I can come here and put restart policy, unless I stop, I can update my policy, and then I can start. It means that unless I properly stop these dudes, all time that the system restart or anything happen, these dudes will be running. And that's if I come here in development, they will be updated this information the time time, few seconds by few seconds. I'm happy with it? No, because I cannot see what information that's come from. I don't know what it's identifying and what's, where is the box. So now I can come here back in my studio code and I will add some extra information. The information that I will add will be the file location where they will save it. So we'll create another line, I'll add file out slash configuration slash www.cyberlab.jpg. What it means that they will create a image there, each few seconds they will create an image called cyberlab.jpg. Before I do it, I need to be sure that this folder www exists. So I come here in my SMB for my server with the port of end of uh, 252, configuration this www, so they will save everything inside this folder. I can close it, I can come here in configuration, settings and I can check if everything to right. I can come, configuration is valid, I can restart and then we can wait a little bit to restart and that we can check if it's really working this uh, first step. Okay, once I restart my home system, now I can check if this Cyberlab is really updated and really have information. What can I do? 
So I can open this page. Here I have the car where they say that it's a car, car 51%. I have some other cars that locate with a low precision, look like 41%, Ford something. And here I have some traffic light that I don't see, this is only street light. And uh, all the time that I update it, they will have uh, more information, but they're not updated with some frequency, they update time to time. So I can come here again, in the Visual Studio, and I can add the frequency that I want that this is gonna happen. If I add a scan, a scan interval as one, it means that each one second they will scan again, update the picture. Remember, if you put one second, it means that each one second they will collect some information and make your CPU processing. So don't use so frequently. If you don't need one second, put five seconds or 10 seconds. At least you don't use so much your CPU and don't to overwarm or overheat your system. What else I can do? I can try to configure this one to add as a camera. So all the time that my picture appear, if I come here in my overview, I can see this one happen. So if I come back here, so what can I do? I can make this picture become a camera, live camera, so I can add in my lovely card. To do it, let's put as a camera and I will add this follow step. Camera, platform will be generic, name will be dudes camera, I can put any name that I want, but because I'm using dudes, I will only want to put dudes camera and this still image will be exactly the same location that they are saving. If you have this one, should be exactly the same, otherwise it will not work well. Have this one add, now we can come back in our configuration, come in settings, check configuration. If everything is valid, we can restart our system. Once that restart, we can try to add our card to the overview and that's have everything showing your overview page. So let's wait the system restart. Once that this is restart, I can come here in my overview and I can edit it, edit, add a card and I will add as a picture. So I come here, entity picture, I select what picture that I want, I want image. So image processor, I remove this demo because I don't care about it. Processor and I will want as a, a dude's cam. So now I start to appear the pictures and I put save. So for each second, they will update. And if you keep looking here, time to time, they will be updating this picture and show another one. But I still not happy with this information. You know why? Because I have too much dirt or too much information that I don't care about this picture. Look like this traffic light, it's not traffic light. So I know that you never have a traffic light. Why they will try to analyze traffic light? As well, these cars, I have 10 points, or there's 10 box. So I have 10 box, 9 box, 10 box that they are showing here. But some of those with a precision really low. So if I come back here in this page, I can see that some of the information is look like 42%, 4%, 52, okay, and a, a low resolution, a high resolution. So it's not good for so many information, so mix of information. What's the best option that I can do? I can come here and now I can modify this uh, confidence that I want. To do it, I can come here in my Visual Studio again and I add a new tab and I will add my confidence. So if I come here, I put that I want everything else with confidence of 6%. For person, I want confidence of 7%. For cars, I want confidence of 5%. If you want traffic light, look like to see traffic light or anything else, you can change your confidence. If you think that confidence of 5% is too high, you can put low, or if you think that's too low, you can put high and you can play around. Have this one, now I can come back in the configuration, settings, I can check my settings and restart my home assistant, hopefully for the last time for this video. So wonderful, my home assistant just restart, so I can come here my overview again. And now they already reduced the box, so they only appear one box here, where it's my car where they show a better precision. If I come here in this page and refresh it, they only show what they really didn't find as a car. Of course, they're not perfectly. So this one, they didn't find a car, this one, but uh, this one, they didn't find, this one, they didn't find a car. If I refresh this page, they will be changing it. In this case, I have a 58% of uh, confidence that it's a car. I know that uh, for us looking, it is 100%, but uh, they still quite good with 58%.
Okay guys, I hope that you like this video. This video was a little bit long but was interesting because in this way you can have a practical idea how you can integrate your camera to your home assistant and do some image analysis. You can uh, have object detection or person detection. In this case, I only show some object detection. I didn't want to go out, but potentially, yes, you can have a object, a person detection as well. If you have only one Raspberry Pi running the home system, you don't want to have another server. Don't worry about it. In the next video, I will try to show how you can connect these dudes to the Oracle Cloud. In this way, you can have all the processor power done in the Oracle Cloud, and that return this processor for your home a system in this way you don't need to have a two or three system or two system in your house you can have your Raspberry Pi and that's another one outside in the cloud running all the processor power so if you like this video don't forget to leave your like consider to subscribe for the channel and see you next time